Welcome to our lecture online. In this next example, we have two springs, one attached to the other. They each have their independent spring constant K1 and K2. When we now apply a force to those two springs, there's a certain amount of elongation. There is an amount of elongation x1 for the first spring and x2 for the second spring. Notice that when we compare this point to this point, this total elongation is the sum of the two. We can say x1 plus x2 is equal to x. If, if we subtract from that x1, the remainder of that is x2, the elongation of the second spring. Notice all that is, a, is caused by the application of a single force F, which is the same force that applies to K1 as it is to K2. What we're trying to find here is the equivalent K, the equivalent spring constant for the two springs together. How do we do that? Well, first of all, what we can say is that F, the force applied, is going to be equal to minus K1 X1, because that's Hooke's law. The force applied equals the product of the spring constant times the elongation times the negative sign because the force of the spring is opposite to the direction of motion away from the equilibrium point. And we can say that F applies to the second spring in the same way, so it's F equals minus K1 times X1, which means that we can solve these two equations for X1. X1 can be written as minus F over K1 and we could write x2 as being minus f over k2. And then finally, we can write that for the equivalent spring system, we can say that f is equal to minus k equivalent times x, where x is the sum of the two. So we can say that f is equal to minus k equivalent times the sum of x1 plus x2. Now what we can do is we can replace x1 and x2 in terms of minus f over k1 and minus f over k2 because that way we eliminate x and we can replace it with k1 and k2 because after all we want to express k, the equivalent k, in terms of k1 and k2. So now we can write that f is equal to minus k equivalent, that should be not x but k equivalent, k equivalent, times x1, which is minus f over k1, plus x2, which is minus f over k2. Now what we can see here is that on the left we have an f, on the right we have an f on, the, uh, on both terms. We can factor out the negative f and multiply times the negative here, so we can say that f is equal to f times k equivalent times 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. So what we've eliminated is so we factor out the negative and multiply times this, and we factor out the f, so we have 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And then we have an f on both sides, so we can divide both sides by f, and we can write that 1 is equal to k equivalent times 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And then we can bring 1 over k equivalent to the other side, so we have 1 over k equivalent is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k, k2. So we're going to write that over a common denominator, so this is equal to k2 over k1 times k2 plus k1 over k1 plus k2, like this. Oh, not plus, but times, so let me correct that, so times k2, that, there you go. So if we cancel out the k2s, we have 1 over k1. If we cancel out the k1s, we have 1 over k2, so so far so good. So we can sum that up over the same denominator, so it's equal to k1 plus k2, all divided by the common denominator of k1 times k2. But this is equal to 1 over k equivalent, so if we now take the inverse of both sides, we can then say that k equivalent is going to be equal to the inverse of that, which is the product k1, k2, over the sum k1 plus k2. That's a funny looking k. There we go. And so here we have found the equivalent spring constant for a system where we have two springs attached, one after the other in series. And that is how it's done.